Hello and welcome to another interesting episode of the special series Life's True Value where we try to understand the real value of experiences that luxury homes offer through unique perspectives of top corporate leaders. I am Anku Goel and in this episode we will continue our journey to explore the ROX from a fresh perspective uncovering the intricate link to luxurious residential properties. Corporate leaders no longer focus solely on return on investments. Now, regardless of the industry, they prioritize improving the return on experiences, which essentially means enhancing both long-term and short-term experiences for all stakeholders, from customers to employees. Mr. Vinak Pai is the MD and CEO of Tata Projects Limited, one of India's leading sustainable tech-led EPC companies. In his illustrious career, he has led world's top EPC companies in over 50 countries, including Jacobs USA and Worley Australia. A respected voice in the industry, Vinayak holds many significant positions in the industry bodies like CII, National Committee of Roads and Highways, CIDC and Construction Federation of India. An alumnus of the College of Engineering Pune with a postgraduate degree in the management from the Symbiosis College Pune and an executive MBA from the IIT Bombay's Shailesh J. Mehta School of Management, Mr. Vinayak Pai is also a member of the Board of Governors of COEP Technology University. Vinayak's groundbreaking contribution have earned him accolades including the Hall of Fame Award as an Infra Industry Leader by Construction Week, the Distinguished Alumni Abhiman Award by the College of Engineering Pune and the prestigious 15th CIDC Vishwakarma Doen of the Industry 2024 Award. Today we delve deep to understand the reason why people like the corporate leaders invest a lot in luxurious home and to understand it better, who else we can have than our guest today, Mr. Vinayak Pai, who is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Tata Projects Limited. Thank you so much sir for sharing time with us, getting onto the show today and it is a real pleasure to have you with us. With such an illustrious career, having someone who has spent his entire career making mammoth uh, structures come to life. How do you feel? And we also want to know how the experience for you has been so far. Thank you, Anku, for having me on this show. I'm really glad we could have this chance to, you know, talk about so many things today uh, in this great setting. Uh, and, you know, it feels really good to be uh, part of this industry, part of uh, building things which will leave a legacy over a period of time. So in a way, uh, I feel honored that somewhere or the other we will leave a legacy which will be remembered for a very long time. So true. From that we want to understand the whole buzzword that we hear in the industries today is about ROX, return on experience. And how do you think you can create that value in your industry for your clients? So your understanding on the buzzword and how you relate to it. Every project we get involved in is an experience for someone. Okay. Right? If we are building a metro, it's for people to travel, you know, make their lives easier, yes. makes life better for them. It's an experience, right? If we build something, people will occupy it, you know, they'll feel comfortable. It's an experience. So our customers actually build experiences and we help them build the experiences for their customers. It's really humbling that we are able to influence so many lives at the same time, right? Uh, building a better world, building a better ecosystem, making people comfortable. So it, because it's all about the experience. It's not one time. These experiences have to last a lifetime. When we build something, they are, you know, multiple generations of people who are going to make use of that. So we have to keep all that in mind and create that overall holistic experience. But have you identified what are the real uh, important elements that your clients are looking for to, exp uh, to have better ROX from you in the industry? There are the basic expectations like, you know, projects have to be done on time, 
projects have to be done at cost, the quality has to be good, the safety has to be exceptional. So those are the basic expectations. And then the whole experience, it has to look great, right? Uh, it has to impress anyone who looks at it has to say, wow, yes. right? because that's the experience. It has to be comfortable, right? It should feel nice. Those are all the soft aspects of creating an experience. Yes. It has to be sustainable. I mean, when you look at it, you should feel that, you know, this is, this takes care of the environment. Right? So those are things which are very important today. In your career life, where you, are, uh, you have always brought to life much structures and the stakes are so high, I have to really understand more from you on experiential aspect and the living spaces. To get to that discussion, let me take you around to a great living space and know more about your understanding on ROX, return on experience and of course your business. So let's explore more. So Vinayak, we are the most interesting part of the property. This is the outdoor space. I hope you're liking it here. It's great. So are you an outdoor person or an indoor person? More of an outdoor. Okay. I need my space indoor, but you know, outdoor is what I really what need. What do you enjoy in the outdoor space? Is it sports? Is it nature? It's the fresh air. Yes. You know, it's the energy you get from being outside. You know, it gives you a great feeling of freshness. You know, looking at you being a top leader, I'm feeling like you're not a very stressed out person. What keeps you so stress-free or what is the mantra for you to stay so stress-free or manage your stress? Well, I, I always believe that your life has to be balanced between okay. four priorities. It's like the four legs of a stool or the four holes of a button. You need to manage your work life. You need to manage your family life. You need to manage yourself. And then you manage need to spend some time with society. Okay. If you actually balance your time between these four priorities, you can really be a much better quality of life and feel more calm about it. Quite a thing to manage all four aspects which I think you are doing. But uh, for that, in your living space, what is that area you've identified or created to make you feel like at home or so stress-free or manage it? Couch and a TV, which is my favorite space. Yes. So when I come back from a day of work, uh, I like my me time as I say. That's yes. the time I mentioned out of the four, the time I spend on myself. Uh, sitting, watching TV or reading something, so I need that space for myself. And then my living room where, you know, I interact with my family. Yes. Uh, we play cards, we play carom. So I think both are, you know, one is an individual space, one is a collective space, both yes. are very important. So two aspects I got here, how you manage your four, two pillars of the yeah. stress management. In the outdoor space also you experience a lot and you manage it through sports or something? I'm a sort of fitness freak is what okay. everyone says. <laughs> uh, I have daily targets for exercise and calories which you know I do 365 days. So I don't have a holiday for fitness. Oh my god. So I do yogas in the morning and then in the evening I go to the gym or I run or I cycle. So it's become a habit with me. I need that you know, to keep me going. And it also gives me a lot of energy. And then of course sports, I play golf, play tennis once in a while. I used to play a lot of badminton. Before I show you around, I also want to know from you, how much of work do you carry to your living space every day? Because, uh, you know, running a company at this level, it is always work in your head. So do you carry it in your living space or it just separated out at your workspace and your living space? You can't eliminate it, okay. but you can reduce it. And you that's can. when you start consciously spending time on yourself. Don't feel guilty about spending time with yourself or your family or the society, because that is required. If you don't do that, then the workspace will consume. Yes. So it's always better to balance it and not feel guilty that, you know, I'm supposed to be working 24 hours a day. That mindset just doesn't work. It'll just create a lot of unnecessary stress. So let's explore the rest of the property and talk more about your life and how living space has an impact on the work productivity. Absolutely, love to. So Vinayak, how do you relate about the work productivity and the living space? Do you find a correlation between them as per your experience? Very strong correlation yes. between the living space, the working space and productivity. Okay. The maximum productivity is when people feel comfortable. And the space has a lot of effect on how a person feels. So I think the living spaces and the working spaces 
are very critical to promote productivity. In your office, do you, are you very uh, consciously have you designed it that the workspace is designed in a certain way and then their productivity is enhanced because of that? Absolutely. So uh, everybody when they are in office need to do two things uh, at least. One is to work on their own okay. and second collaborate yes. and ideate together with their teams. So there are different spaces and they have to be created in a different way. So when a person is on their own and they want to be productive, you have to design that personal space as a cocoon where they feel comfortable and they can concentrate on the work and be productive. And then when they get together with the teams, there is another dynamic. It has to be more bright. It has to, you know, create a lot of energy around that conversation. So I think the designs of offices have to match all that. And the similarly with the workspaces at home because a lot of people are working from home. But one thing about luxury, do you think luxury as an element is important in your living space to make you feel productive at work? Are you a very luxury oriented person? Not ultra luxurious, yes. but it has to be comfortable. It has to you be. Know, it's, comfort is more important than luxury. I mean, if luxury leads to comfort, well and good, that's great. But if it is luxury and the comfort is not there, it doesn't work. So I think it has to be a combination. I think you're best at uh, making us understand on design because we know that the new parliament also has been designed by your company and has come out great. It is one of the unique contribution there. And to explore more into your business and know it in depth, I definitely need to show you the business center around. So let us go there and talk about your business. In sure, let's do that. So Vinayak, we are at the business center here. I'm sure you quite like this space. It's uh, dedicated to the business talk. And now that we're sitting here, it compels me to talk about your business. You're sitting at the helm of the industry, the EPC sector to say so. I want to understand from you how ROX, return on experience can be related to your industry and uh, do you really work bit by bit or take continuous measure to improve the ROX in your company? Absolutely, I think the ROX is important in any industry okay. and our industry is no different. Yes. Uh, one part is the formal part of the experience, which is the time, the quality, the safety. But the other is the whole customer experience. When you deal with the customer, how do they feel dealing with you? Yes. How does the partnership develop? Uh, what are the various parameters which makes them feel that the interests of both parties are aligned? So the experience is good. So we want our customers to eventually say that we went through a project and the project is difficult, but we came out with a feeling that our experience was good. I think that's very important. So I think even in the construction space, we can say experience really matters. It is not very technical as it appears only. Do the job, get it right and get out of it. No, no, no. It's very important because, you know, many of the companies like us also track yes. our record on repeat customers. Okay not only about a project, we want to work with customers over a period of time and unless you create a return on experience, you don't get that continuity. Coming from return on experience, I definitely want to talk about technology. We are in the fast-paced technology world, digital India, much beyond that now, we are talking about artificial intelligence also. How do you associate with the upgraded technology and the fast-changing technology with your sector and how are you coping with it? It's very important today, like never before, the need for technology is felt in the industry. Okay. There is data around every industry and their acceptance of technology. The bottom is agriculture, just one step above is construction. So you can imagine the challenge which the industry has to upgrade itself on the technology barometer. We feel that the challenges in the industry today, for example, we have a challenge of attracting uh, skilled labor into this industry. Okay. When that happens, one of the triggers which you have is to use technology. Use of technology, one, attracts youngsters into the industry. Yes. Second, it improves the efficiency. So we are investing a lot in technology on an integrated project management platform, which can get all the data of a project onto one platform, thereby improving the overall predictability of those projects and thereby improving the experience uh, of our customers. If you can also highlight me some driving factors in your company which leads to a consistent success and growth because when we talk about growth and success, consistency plays a very important role and not just your industry and does it vary from industry to industry? What is your mantra of understanding consistent growth and success in any business? I think consistency is important. 
right okay. every industry calls it different uh, we call it predictable predictability or okay. predictable project delivery it's always that whatever you promise you deliver right so if there is a time and a cost for a project you have to deliver within that time and cost right the safety parameters have to be within a certain margin your uh, quality has to be within a certain framework so i think all of this is very important that whatever we promise we deliver now uh, predictability is the word we use you can use any other thing and that leads to the customer experience you know on one hand customers really don't expect great they only say that whatever you promise you please deliver so what what is the mantra is it like you have a plan b ready to get to that match the delivery if it goes out of way exactly you need to plan well one okay. you need to plan your plan a should be very solid okay. right it should take care of all the disruptions which are going to happen the monsoon is going to come the festivals are going to come and the disruptions are going to come so how do you build it into your plan a is the first and then of course have your plan b and plan c if for some reason plan a doesn't work Now being the leader in this industry i cannot let you go without answering or giving us a hack about what lesson should youngsters or the other business people drive from you what makes a business really get going and successful what is that lesson that you want to leave us with on your journey that you've experienced through i would say first is you should have passion for whatever you are doing okay. if you are in an industry you should feel passionate about it whatever be the industry The second is you have to always connect yourself with the grassroots of your industry, and for us, it's the construction side. So, if you are in the industry, you have to look for an opportunity which will get you to the construction side. So, you are tied up with the grassroots. You can't grow without really understanding the nuances of what happens on a day-to-day -day basis on the ground. I think passion. You need a lot of energy, and then you need to create, be grounded, and you know understand your industry well. I think these are some of the lessons and I would say finally be bold you know take risks uh, don't be afraid of failure take them in your stride learn from them and keep growing I've never met someone with so much clarity about the mantra of success because it spells out of your words very clearly thank you so much for coming around giving us your time sharing insights about ROX about experience and business everything together in such a comprehensive manner it is a pleasure meeting you and sharing this moment with you thank, thank you, you very so much, much. And with that we come to an end of this episode but before we bid adieu I want to convey my gratitude to Mr Vinayak Pai for taking out time for this show and sharing his wisdom experience and insights with us to summarize we have uncovered the relationship between our home and work productivity as well as the role our home plays in shaping our professional journey and overall well-being this is anku goel signing off from 25 south one of india's most luxurious living places where every corner exudes opulence and elegance wishing you all a productive and a fulfilling journey ahead Thank you.